the term still life, do you think of a painting of a vase of flowers or maybe a bowl of fruit? I know that's the first thing that my mind pops to when I hear the word still life. But still life actually is just a term that broadly describes artwork where the subject matter is like inanimate objects. So things rather than say people, which would be um, a portrait under the broad genre or a landscape or an abstract painting. So basically when you hear the word still life, they're thinking of things like in life that are still, they don't move, they're not living. This painting by Cezanne kind of fits that classical image of what a still life is. There's some fruit, a bottle of wine, some bread, things you might find in someone's home, kind of arranged casually on a tabletop. Another painting, but in a completely different style, Brock used items from around the home arranged for inspiration for his painting. There's a guitar, a piece of newspaper, a water pitcher, all on a tabletop. This is a painting made more recently. It's actually by a local artist from the Northampton area. And it almost looks like a photograph at first, but it's actually an oil painting of just three simple plastic cups sitting on a countertop with some sunshine coming through. This is a very new piece of artwork. It was probably created in the last month or so. It was done by an artist named Catherine White. Like us, Catherine is stuck in her home because of the pandemic, and she started to create artwork with objects that she just found around her home, things that she looked at every day. She created a sculpture with these objects, carefully arranging them in a way that maybe you wouldn't normally see these objects put together, and then she photographed it. There is now an online virtual museum of art that's being made during the pandemic. Um, there's a link to it in the Google Doc that I have for this assignment. I encourage you to take a look at it for some inspiration because in our next project, we are going to also be making art based on our experience being in our home during this pandemic. So my challenge for you for this project is to think of an object or objects that kind of symbolize your experience being at home most of the time during this pandemic. We normally spend so much of our days away. We spend a lot of time at school. I know I spend a lot of time at work, spend a lot of time in my car. And then even on the weekends, I tend to go out a lot. I'll go shopping or I'll go to a friend's house or visit family. So being stuck at home, um, I'm noticing um, kind of the objects that I'm surrounded with. And I'm also noticing that there are some objects that I rely on more often now that we are at home so much. So just think, do a brainstorm, um, come up with some ideas, maybe even just right now where you're sitting, look around and see what you might be around, what might be around. Um, maybe there's something that has been keeping you busy that you really are thankful that you have. Um, maybe it's a pair of shoes that you haven't worn for a while because you haven't been go going out. There are, this is, like I always say, there's no right or wrong answer. It is what is important to you. Um, just wanted to give you a general kind of category of different objects you might um, think of. So maybe entertainment, clothing, food would be a really interesting um, topic if you wanted to explore that. I know that we are getting a little tired of eating the same thing all the time because we don't go out very much. Um, maybe there's a snack that you've been relying on that's been kind of your go-to and you make sure that you always have it on hand. Um, anything like that. Any, um, it doesn't have to be anything exciting. It can be something very simple. I'm going to show you mine and you will see it's not very exciting at all. So with art, it's sometimes it's not the topic or it is the topic. It's not necessarily the object. It's what the object is going to represent. And that combined with your idea makes it interesting. So give me one second and I will get my images for you. For this project, we're gonna start by picking one object, which will be our subject matter. And we're gonna photograph it two different ways. I am back with my object. So the object I chose will be the subject matter for my photographs. The object that I chose is my, oops, my TV remote. The reason I chose this is because I have been watching a lot more TV than I normally do. 
Um, sometimes during the week, if I'm working and I'm in school, um, I won't touch my remote for days because I'm busy and I'm tired and I don't do a lot of TV watching. But now that we're home, I've been watching a lot more. Um, I'm not quite as tired as I usually am because I'm not on my feet like I am when I'm at school. Um, I'm also not around a lot of different people. I, I'm kind of a introvert, but I kind of miss being around a lot of people, a lot of students. So I like to have the TV on to hear the voices, even when I'm working to have it on in the background. So the TV remote is been an important part of my pandemic experience. Um, quite often the TV remote is lost and one of my kids loses it. And a common place I normally find it is stuck in the cushion of the couch. The first photograph we're going to take is of the object or objects in their environment. Where would we normally find them? So here is my object in its environment. It's stuck down the cushion of the couch. You can see the blanket is nearby. I framed this, so meaning I made sure that the only things in my photograph were just the remote, the couch cushions, and the blanket. I didn't want a lot of other um, kind of visual information cluttering up my photograph. Thinking about the cushion of the couch, as one of my um, my setups, so how I'm going to photograph this object. And then I also wanted to put it in a place where we wouldn't normally find a TV remote. So that is number two. The second photograph is going to be an arranged photograph. So you're going to take your object and you are going to place it um, intentionally in an arrangement, whether it's in a place where you would normally not find it um, that particular object, or maybe you just want to set it up in a special way, kind of giving it a place of honor, maybe surrounding it with other objects. So that will be your arranged. So I had been thinking that I'm not spending enough time outside. We had a couple beautiful days and I took my remote outside with me for a little photo shoot. I arranged it in the grass with some flowers and that is going to be uh, my second photograph. So when we see the two photographs of my remote side by side, they're in two different situations and they're kind of treated differently. Um, when it's stuck in the couch, it's just an, ob an everyday ordinary object um, that's just sort of been forgotten. And when I brought it outside and surrounded it by flowers, it kind of made it seem like the remote was more important or um, just interesting to see a TV remote outside in nature. Not quite sure what I was thinking, but I did have fun doing it and I do think that my Ultimately, my last um, photograph, the one outside, is a more interesting photograph, so I'm happy that I chose to do that with this. I really can't wait to see what you guys came up with. Please don't forget to send your photographs to me, either in an email or you can send them in a text message. All the information that you need will be in the Google Doc in Google Classroom. I think this could be a really um, powerful and interesting display if we were to put everyone's photograph all um, next to one another in our online virtual art gallery. Just the different ways that people are experiencing the pandemic and just seeing it all in like a grid of photographs could be really cool and I'm looking forward to it.